What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're pretty much gonna be taking care of all the thermal and moisture protection for our off-grid home. So that pretty much covers finishing up our siding, our roof, insulation, and we're also gonna be covering our deck and our gutters. If you haven't already, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel, and please turn on the bell for notifications. Is that how you say that? Yeah. Yeah. So. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay guys, so we're starting here where our last video left off by installing the mahogany accent siding you saw us sanding and staining in the last video. We start with the frame around the window the top is an inch and three quarters by two and a quarter inch tall, and the vertical legs left and right of the window are the same. The bottom is a little different. We can't put flashing here because it would interfere with the window, so we cut a bevel on the top of the bottom piece of mahogany so the water can drain off. On the top, we'll install metal flashing and then come back and add the tongue and groove in between. Once the tongue and groove is finished, it's time for a little detail work on the corners, and this is gonna be mitered. A word of caution here for the mitered corners, these may not necessarily last a lifetime. They can open up and move, and that's just something you have to deal with if you want the look of real wood. But we do want them to last as long as possible and give it the best chance of staying the way it is. So we sealed the wood, top, bottom, front, back, and even the cut ends with polyurethane to help block out moisture from the wood. We're also making a little more progress on our lap siding. We can't totally finish this just yet because there are areas where the siding will be on the wall above the roof. So we'll have to come back and finish those sections once the roof is completed. Next up is the front of the house. This is pretty much the same thing with a couple exceptions. The top is the same with the metal flashing. The sides left and right are the same, but there's no bottom here. It goes right to some metal flashing which separates the wood structure from the concrete. And then in between the windows and doors, we're gonna go ahead and rip pieces of wood to fit exactly what that dimension is, which is a little wider than the top and sides of the frame. At an inch and three quarters, this wood is too thick to use standard siding nails. So what we're using here is three inch exterior rated trim head screws. And we're countersinking them a little bit because you want at least one inch to bite into the framing beneath the plywood. Now we're moving on to the deck support, and we're doing something a little different here. Some people call it Z-bracing, some people call it V-bracing, but they both mean the same thing. This was designed by a structural engineer, and it's going to laterally brace the deck joist underneath, so there's no parallelogramming of the deck structure. Traditionally, you'll see decks that use what's called crow's feet. We don't really like the way those look, especially since this is a modern home, so that's why we went with the Z-bracing. That being said, we still don't love that either, and we might change it to a different type of support later on, but for now, we just have to have something to make the deck safe. So now finally, we're gonna get onto the roof so we can finish up the siding and get this thing watertight. This roof is pretty complicated. It's our first metal roof we've ever done. We usually leave this to the pros, and a uh, little bit of hindsight here. Uh, probably should have done that here as well because they could have probably finished this in a lot less time than we did. So the first thing we have to do on this roof is install the flashing at the lowest point of the roof where the gutter is going to be. And that's because everything from that point is going to tile above that, making it impossible for water to get underneath of it. So once the flashing at the gutter line is done, we're going to start laying our underlayment. One of the main challenges of this roof is that it's such a low roof pitch and the manufacturer of the standing seam metal roof does not recommend their product used on a roof pitch this low. Usually the threshold on a standing seam metal roof is about two and 12. So that's two inches of rise and 12 inches of run. We're at a one and 12, so we're gonna take some extra precautions here. So the first thing is high heat peel and stick ice and water shield. And you'll see us once we get the flashing on here, we're gonna start rolling this out left to right on the roof and overlapping and continually moving up the roof, kind of like really big shingles. Once we get to the top here on all the different roofs, we can actually start laying some metal down. Most of the time, these panels just snap together. They call it snap lock where we're at here, and they just snap together. You step on them and they click together. Well, 
since our roof pitch is so low, water is moving at such a low speed that during freezing conditions and whatnot, it can actually build up ice and then leak water up over the standing seam and underneath the metal roof and into the home. So to prevent that, we put what's called butyl tape on every single rib on the entire roof, which was a lot of extra work and a considerable amount of money. So you'll see us here, we're laying the butyl tape starting at the top all the way down the roof panel. And then we set the next panel on top and push it into place. It's a lot more difficult to get these to snap together when there's butyl tape in the middle. One of the issues we had on the bedroom side of the home, the roof panels were over 50 feet long. This roof is 50 feet long front to back. And it would have been nearly impossible to get panels that size up here. So unfortunately we had to break them in half. Now we have two approximately 25 foot pieces of roof. We went ahead and just did exposed fasteners on that portion because later on when we get the solar panels on, these will not be visible at all. This whole roof will be hidden basically. So once we finished up the foyer roof and our bedroom side of the home, we went ahead and jumped over to the garage to finish that up. The garage is the most straightforward roof on this house because it's one piece front to back and um, it's just a big rectangle. Once we finished up the garage roof, we went ahead and jumped over to the living room side of the home. We've kind of avoided this as much as possible because it has valleys and gables and crickets and all these crazy things on this roof. So since we're new to this, we're learning as we go. And this is something we put off until the end. While the guys were finishing up the roof, the painters made it up to the site to start prepping. They're going to caulk the joints on all the lap siding, fill any nail holes, and then start spraying our paint. We decided on a Sherwin-Williams exterior satin paint called Muddled Basil. I think we did a pretty good job picking a color that would help the house kind of blend in with the surroundings and not be visible from the highway. While the house was being painted, the inspector showed up to do our framing inspection. This is one of the most involved inspections and it usually takes quite a while because there's so much to go over. The reason this has to be done now is because the next thing we need to do is insulate the interior of the home, which will end up hiding a lot of the framing. The good thing is we passed on the first try, so now we're good to move on to insulation. After the painters finished the exterior siding, they moved on to the deck structure and the handrails. This is a different paint we're using an industrial water-based urethane enamel from Sherwin-Williams for the steel because it's better suited for the metal than a latex paint. And since we're already spraying the handrails with that, we went ahead and decided to use it on the deck structure as well. It would have been cheaper to use the latex on the deck structure, but we avoided a lot of extra masking and prep work by just keeping it the same. One of the other things we have to finish up before installation is we have to get a bunch of conduit installed for the solar setup. The batteries are in the attic and we originally were gonna put the inverters up there as well, but we figured that would be kinda inconvenient to access. So David ran two two inch conduits from the battery bank in the attic, down through the attic, through my closet wall and out to the closet. Then he ran a conduit from the inverter through the floor system and out to the side of the house where it will go to a transfer switch and finally to our generator. We went with a Solark inverter 
And this can actually be installed outdoors, but the warranty isn't as good. So kind of unfortunately, we ended up stuffing it in my office closet. It's kind of big and bulky, but probably the best option for maintenance and usage in the future. Now it's time for the insulation on the home. The insulation installers were pretty fearless to getting this big truck up here and turning it around in the driveway. I actually saw one of the wheels jumping off the ground a little bit when he was turning around because he was so top heavy and pushing the truck to the absolute limit here. They have to have quite a bit of equipment here, some 55 gallon drums full of uh, spray foam and a big air compressor and a generator. So we're gonna do an average of 11 inches in the roof deck and the floor system. And then we're gonna do bat insulation in the walls. A lot of times we use bat in the walls because if we ever need to go back inside, it's a lot easier than digging out spray foam. So we just keep the walls bat insulation usually. The R value is about the same for an open cell spray foam anyways. So I just think it's nice to be able to get back in the walls if need be. Now that the roof is done and the insulation is done, it's time for the gutters. We changed the original plan here. We were gonna originally just do regular round downspouts and box gutters and whatnot, but we actually changed the design here to utilize a lot of rain chains. If you're not familiar with rain chains, instead of a pipe coming out of the gutter and directing the water to the ground where you'll have a spillway or it will go into a four inch corrugated pipe underneath the ground or whatever, this goes from gutter to a chain and then to a drainage box and then the water's rerouted via a four inch corrugated pipe from the drain box. It's a lot more expensive. It's a lot more time consuming to get this right. And the rain chains, unfortunately, are back ordered by about three months. So we don't have those to show you yet, but we will in the future. Right about the time we were done with our gutters, our deck showed up and we can go ahead and install the finished deck boards on top. This product is by Azek. It's their vintage series and mahogany is the color. We actually just finished up another project where we use this product as siding, but we liked it so much we decided to use it for our deck. It's all PVC, so it's kind of different to work with, but we're going to start by putting a border outside of Azek deck boards that do not have a tongue and groove on them because that would be visible from the exterior of the home. Once that's done, it's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna start laying deck boards front to back, left to right, until we get to the door here. We're using a concealed fasteners. It's a clip system and plugs on the outside of the border. Courtney and I decided it would be a good idea before we put drywall on this home to test our air conditioning and make sure there's no leaks and everything is functioning properly. So that's what we did. We temporarily wired up a plug to the air conditioning condenser and then we plugged that straight into our generator here and fired it up and it worked great. It's actually very quiet and it doesn't consume very much power and it blows really cold air and got our house down to temperature really fast. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a lot. Another little thing we did is we built a little doghouse here to cover our well pump because in the winter 
it could freeze and bust the lines. And actually last winter it already busted the line and it's leaking right now. So we're gonna go ahead and address that by building a little structure over the top of it to keep it nice and warm in the winter. And this we're gonna try to make look as nice as possible, even though no matter what you do, it's still in my opinion an eyesore. So we started out just by making a little structure. It's sitting on pressure treated four by fours that touch the dirt. And then on top of that, standard wall framing, same pitch as the house. And then we go ahead and lay our lap siding on top. We cut a little door in the side for access later, which we'll make a mahogany door for in a future video. And we put a roof on top, caulked, and then painted it. We also put some sheet metal roofing on the top. We didn't put too much effort into this though. We just ran exposed fasteners because hey, it's a well pump house. Something you might've noticed in some of our other videos, but we haven't really talked about it much, is our vegetable garden. David and I are both really new to gardening. I've had little gardens before, like maybe a couple tomato plants, but I had never used starter trays or even fertilizer really. But we both wanna become as self-sufficient as we can, especially now with the crazy prices at the grocery store. So we kinda just jumped in and we're learning as we go. Starting seeds at a house you don't actually live at yet has been a challenge, but we got a ton of different things planted out and some of them are actually doing pretty good. We've learned so much from just watching other gardeners on YouTube and we hope to keep getting better every year. Let us know down in the comments if you know of any good gardening channels we should check out. All right guys, that's it for this video. If you have any comments or questions about anything we're doing in these videos, please leave them down in the comments below. Your engagement really helps us out on this channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.